Hi guys. Hey everyone, it's Patrice and Sharice and we're back. <laughs> so this is part two of our sister's check-in mm -hmm. and we had more questions so we thought we'd just go right into it and check in with each other. So I'll go first this time. All right. <sighs> How are you feeling in general? How are you feeling? Ooh. Wow, that's a loaded question. I would say that I'm feeling all over the place. Honestly, I'm scared. I'm scared to return back to work because we're still in the thick of a crisis with this whole pandemic and the virus going on with COVID-19. So I'm a little, a little afraid um, of the new normal. Yeah, because like at this time, guys, like this is, I guess, uh, week one of the stay-at-home order being lifted. So people are, are, some people are back to normal, but some people are not. I mean, it is scary. There's no um, vaccine, like there's no real resolution, so yeah. Nothing, and then on top of that, my daughter's school is still closed because of all of this, and you know, I just feel like a lot of businesses are ready to open back up because, you know, they want the economy to flourish, but I really am afraid of our overall health and our safety because there has been no solution yeah. implemented. Um, so yeah, I'm just a little afraid and then I'm also feeling anxious because of all of the uncertainty. You know, there's, there's discussions of a wave coming in and um, us being in crisis again like we were back in March. Yeah, like the same thing. Yeah, it's but only we're like back to normal, but like the same thing. Like, yeah. What's the first thing you want to do when you're comfortable um, with the stay-at-home order being lifted? Oh, okay. So that's a perfect second question <laughs> because yeah. yeah, I think it is about getting comfortable. Um, I'm not super comfortable yet, but I think I definitely want to travel. Like before this happened, I had just got a new passport and I was like ready to go somewhere. I was actually going to go on a cruise <laughs> to Mexico and um, like literally that was in, yeah, it was scheduled for May and um, then everything happened and so I'm actually really happy that it happened before I actually got on the cruise ship because my friend, like I, like no, I would have not been good trapped on Yeah, so awful. I, you know, I I don't even know how yeah. um, people survived out there, kind of just like waiting and trying to find. Yeah, I don't know if my stress and anxiety would have been great like that. But I think eventually I want to travel out of the country. I want to go somewhere, do something. Um, but I don't know when I'll be comfortable with doing that. So I don't know. But yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to travel again when it's safe. And I know like other countries may not be um, back to normal as well. <laughs> How can you be a light in darkness? I'm always a light. I'm a Leah. <laughs> I was born in the summer and I bring sunshine everywhere I go. So, you know, if you're on the same path as me, you're a light. So just being It's you. for me. <laughs> yeah, I just honestly, I feel like, um, being a light in this moment of darkness right now, currently, it's really just being um, vocal and given a lot of encouragement and wisdom along the way. So I have a lot of friends that are um, not black and they've reached out to me about Black Lives Matter and I'm really impressed with um, the overall um, turnaround that Black Lives Matter movement has really caused. Yeah, I mean, I'm honestly, I'm proud. I'm really proud yeah. because I love to see change, you know, and it's just like amazing to see Black Lives Matter and the movement holding people accountable. So we always need it and this is just, I mean, I love it. I think, you know, obviously out of tragedy, it just shows how strong black people really are. This is who we are. We can we can make change, we get back up. And I mean, that's one thing I'm always so proud of with the black community and I love the movement because it's just, it just shows the strength
strength. The, the strength of the community. So we're resilient. Yeah. Um, but more so than that, I really love the fact that a lot of the peaceful protesting that's been taking place um, has, has taken such a course of translating into unity and love and kindness. People are gathering and getting together from all walks of life and, and getting together for something that's remarkable. So it's just been a wonderful, a wonderful thing to witness despite um, the reason why we had to have Black yeah. Lives Matter. Which has been going on for so long and it's just, um, yeah, I just, I know I, we're going somewhere and I just, I'm anxious to see where this takes us. Definitely. Okay, so what have you been doing during the quarantine? What have, <laughs> what have I been doing? It has been, it has been a full, what is this, two months, two and a half months. Um, so I, I was teaching the whole time. We transitioned into distance learning. So uh, we started, to, I did a lot of like professional development training on how to teach kids and um, use technology to teach kids. So I've been discovering new programs, keeping up with uh, my students. I have a lot of them, <laughs> so I've been keeping up with them. Uh, still actually working in real estate. So I actually was able to sell a house um, in this quarantine period. A million dollar house. <laughs> so that was exciting and scary and nerve wracking. Things were changing so quickly. So uh, that was crazy. And also during this quarantine time, I've been really enjoying being with myself because I really am an introvert, kind of. Some like I'm part introvert, part extrovert. And so I really enjoyed spending time with myself and I redid my patio. So watch that video if you haven't seen it. <laughs> I redid my patio um, in my office and make my space a comfortable space. That's always been important to me before this quarantine happened. And this just is, it's a reminder of why I love having a comfortable space because this is your, this is your piece. And I really feel, you know, sad for people who don't have a peaceful place to be during the quarantine that always kind of just broke my heart, you know, um, for I know people aren't all happy and comfortable with where they are. So I've just been really thankful and just praying a lot for those people who are not at peace in their home. But um, yeah, so I've been utilizing my time and working hard in my house. <laughs> And yeah. next to my neighbor. I mean, I honestly don't think this would have been the same if I wasn't quarantining with um, my sister, you know? Yeah, because um, we live, you know, literally next door to each other. <laughs> next door. So it's been refreshing because during this whole time, I've been working um, remotely in addition to being a homeschool teacher <laughs> to a five-year-old who's getting ready to go to kindergarten and um, cooking a lot. I, yeah, I've become I've become a housewife without a husband, so it's been crazy. But I actually I really enjoy the time that I'm at home, right? And not having to be in the in traffic all day. We live in Los Angeles, so it's everywhere is far away. Like you're always at least 40 minutes away from your next destination. Yeah, it's been something, but I'm glad that you found the enjoyment in it too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. What have you learned since the pandemic hit? Ooh, that's a good one. I've learned a lot. So, since this whole pandemic hit, I learned a lot about myself and things that I really want to work on and grow. Um, I've realized that I'm not as confident as I thought I was in like my own self. And then being at home, alone and working remotely and then also being with my daughter um, all day, I realized how dope I really am. I fell in love with myself a little bit more <laughs> and I've given myself permission to not try to be so perfect. I think I was really hard and um, critical on myself on everything I do, whether it's work or being a mom. And so um, I've had a lot of time with God and really just asking him to reveal to me where he wants me to be.
be, what he wants me to do, and then also just trying to find the good in everything that I do so that I'm not so critical about being perfect. But yeah, I've, I've realized I'm pretty dope. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, what have you learned? I've learned to let things go. <laughs> just let it go. You didn't, you didn't get to go on that cruise, girl. It's fine. Let it go. You know, it's. I've had to let a lot of uh, fun opportunities go. I've had to let myself off the hook for things. You know, not fulfilling things as a teacher. You know that I planned, and I just had to just let it go and just start fresh. So I've just been, yeah, letting things go. <laughs> and I, I threw away so much stuff in my classroom trying to clean it out, and it was just really refreshing. Mm. You know, I feel like I'm always holding on to things, but this kind of pandemic has made me have this sense of like, oh, you know, I need to get rid of this, you know, and it's just kind of been refreshing, like, getting rid of something. Have you been discriminated against or racially profiled recently? Well, that's interesting because I, I feel like I have, and I feel like it's always been a thing um, with black people and with myself where it's like, you feel something, you know, something or you know someone is treating you a certain way and there's very few reasons as to why and, right. and then sometimes you're like am I tripping is this you know coming down to race and I think with this current time and people catching things on camera it's kind of like you know what you know and then also seeing it every other uh, person every other right. city country state go through it it's like um, no I, I was Right, you know, I knew I felt that way, you know, so um, I feel like I have, and not as... Like, give me an example, like, when and how? Well, it's like, okay, I went to, um, I was shopping for my apartment, mm -hmm. and I went to a really big retail store to get furniture and things, and I was with a friend, and we were both getting our own things, you know, and meeting up here, and I felt like I was not getting any help like I literally was not like I would ask people like they were just not being helpful to me and I'll just say no one looks like me as in the store and not that they need to but um you know customer service is customer service and I was like okay maybe they're busy maybe they're not but then I would ask my friend hey can you you try you know like you go ask and she would get help she would get the help she would get directed and it was just like wow you know um, if they were too busy to help me they wouldn't have helped her you know because right. I didn't necessarily look like we were, we were together you know sometimes it just really comes down to like the way people interact with you and I kind of felt like disregarded but then there's also times where it's like I know I look young so sometimes people can just like rush me off like oh she's not getting anything here which is a, a dumb assumption you know <laughs> but um, there's that there is the, the issue, I guess, for some people of me being a woman, but then again, you know, she's a woman as well. Mm -hmm. um, she looks young as well, and sometimes I just have those feelings, and I think it's microaggressions like that, where people just don't want to serve you or be of service to you. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that, those kind of feelings are familiar to me, being from uh, coming from a predominantly white school and dealing with little microaggressions here and there. And I feel like sometimes those feelings are familiar to me. And I'm like, you know, what can you say? <laughs> Unless you have something on camera or you have proof. Mm -hmm. But you feel what you feel, you know what you know. Yeah. So like that's my most recent. And then outside of that, you know, with um, not all people who live in our community are, you know, friendly to us and have sometimes made it clear. Yeah. And, and have brought up our race. So that's not as recent, but you're still the same people, right? So we, even though you said it a year ago, it's still you, we're still, you know. Yeah, know. It's in an isolated one, and it's unfortunate because we live in a, a predominantly right. for, yeah, <laughs> um, a scale neighborhood, and there's been comments made by, you know, our community, they don't understand or they can't wrap their head around how my sister and I can live here and have our own our own places and it's not their business to know how we pay our bills right. or, or how we can afford um, 
our, our homes, but what it is, is it's just this entitlement or this, um, yeah, it's just entitlement to think that they could even ask such an outlandish question or make such a remark that they wouldn't make with someone who wasn't of our ethnicity. So it's just a little disheartening when we're in 2020 and people are still very ignorant and have a certain way of, of looking at life or thinking that we can't be successful and have gainful employment and, you know, live in a really nice place. So right. it's just unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, it's happened a few times. I, re I remember one restaurant, a popular restaurant close here that would not seat us. Um, and that was like crazy. It's like, this is our community. Are you serious? And it may not be the restaurant. It could just be those people. But that's happened close to where we live. That's happened in Hollywood, another place. And um, yeah, it's like these companies, I'm, I'm happy that they're kind of leading out um, racist people, prejudiced people who discriminate against people of color. So Yeah, and that comes back then, around. <laughs> it came back around that next week because that weekend it was we were celebrating your birthday. Right. And there was a waitress who had a problem with I guess the way we looked and she had an issue with us and didn't didn't serve us, refused to serve us. But that's okay because I had her job by the next week because I was gonna make sure um, that someone was going to be held accountable for discriminating, especially when it's racial profiling. Like, it's just not acceptable. Well, we have two more questions yes. in this check-in, so here I'll go first. All right. What's your thoughts on the Black Lives Matter movement? Ooh. My first thought about the Black Lives Matter movement that it's unfortunate that we have to have a movement this time, this day and age, but it's necessary. And so I'm just so grateful that there's individuals that have come together and created an organization that has been so impactful and has made such a significant difference in such a short period of time because literally uh, Black Lives Matter has been in place for several years. It's just that recently um, they've gone viral and you know the whole world is now um, understanding the movement and what it stands for and the significance um, that it's making in, in America and all over the world. Yeah, it's really nice to see um, other races embracing the movement and really understanding it. It's kind of been like a, a moment of realization that the Black Lives Matter movement has really um, they've caused and I, I'm really I'm really proud of it I'm really happy with how do you stay fit hey <laughs> if we want to call this you know what I will say I used to eat out so much I live a crazy busy life I have three jobs and I used to eat out so much so I mean although I have not been working out which I really want to do I can say I've been eating a lot healthier <laughs> so, if we want to call this fit, I was gonna know. say I don't know because uh, Chef Patrice has been <laughs> whipping up some very interesting things <sighs> in the kitchen, and yeah, I would have to say that the closest thing to staying fit has been really being at home. Yeah, but I really want to start working out, so um, that's next. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do a workout challenge. I think that if we can motivate and inspire each other, and then. Um, challenge each other. Challenge each compete other. Compete with each other. We'll be successful. <laughs> yeah, it's not just about your outer appearance, it's about how you're going to feel throughout the day. Yeah, I definitely need something to help me feel less sluggish. And my best friend's wedding is coming up in November. I want to be cute. <laughs> the dresses are gorgeous, so you will be no matter what. But yeah, I definitely think that we can get um, even more toned and more fit. Yeah, more healthy. All right, okay. Yeah. So 2020 is not over. It's not well, over, it's not a wash yet. We're still optimistic that there's more to come. Um, if you guys haven't participated, please, please, please look into how you can contribute to Black Lives Matter because that movement is something that is going to change the world and it already has played such a pivotal role in making a difference. Yeah, and we'll leave a 
a link to ways you can help in the description. So thank you so much for watching, you guys. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye!